This is Max Demystified. This is going to be our first series on plane shapes. So we want to deal with perimeter and area of plane shapes. So I'll start with difference between perimeter and area. In order to help us to understand the major difference between perimeter and area of a plane shape, I want us to begin to view perimeter as the path taken by the shape, the path taken by the shape, or as the borderline of the shape, the borderline of the shape. I often tell my student to view perimeter as though you have your finger and you are tracing out the shape with your finger. That's what perimeter is. So if I'm to act, find the perimeter of this shape, I will simply add up all this path. That will be A plus B plus C plus D plus E. That will be the perimeter of this shape. Now, if you want to view area, I want you to see the area of the shape as if you are painting the shape. As if you are painting the shape. So if I paint this shape, it is the area of the shape I am showing you right now. So when you paint the shape, the part you are painting is the area of the shape. So I tell my students, see area as though you have the palm of your hand and you are touching the shape. Area has to do with touching, touching the shape. Whereas perimeter has to do with tracing the shape out. That's the major difference between perimeter and area. Next, let's look at the general formula for calculating the area of any plane shape. Observe the following shapes and point out something common to all of them. That's a triangle. This is a rectangle. This is a square. And this is a trapezium. And we also have a parallelogram. Now, what is common to all of them? Do you have any idea? Any idea? If you observe them carefully, you will discover that they have at least a pair of parallel lines. At least a pair of parallel lines. Observe critically. At least they have a pair of parallel lines. Don't be deceived. What to write, have right here. There is a point here. And a point is parallel to any line. So this point is parallel to this line. Let's check the second one. Of course, you know that these lines are parallel to themselves. And even these ones too are parallel to themselves. Let's keep moving. Same thing happens to this one too. These are parallel to themselves. And this one too are parallel to themselves. So of course, you can see the parallel line there. And you can see the parallel line there. I always like to write the formula as top plus bottom over 2 times perpendicular height, where the top and bottom are those parallel lines. You know, one is on top, one is at the bottom. Of course, you could be turned around or something, but top plus bottom over 2 times perpendicular height. That's my general formula. And you can use to calculate the area of all these plane shapes. Let's start with a triangle. The top is just a point, that's zero, plus the bottom is the base, that's B over two, times perpendicular height is the A shear. And if you do it, calculate it, you have B over two times the H, and that is half base times height. And that's how they often write the formula. Let's look at the rectangle. The top is L, the bottom is also L over 2. The perpendicular height here happens to be the breadth. So you have 2L over 2 times the breadth. The 2, we cancel the 2, 
and that is LB, and that's why the formula is length times breadth. If we also bring that into a square, you discover that the top and bottom are both L and L, and when you add that together, you have 2L divided by 2 times the perpendicular height, which happened to be L in this case. So we have L times L, and that is L squared. And you see area of a square is L squared. Let's try that with a trapezium. Of course, that's very easy. The top is A, the bottom is B over 2 times perpendicular height. And that's how people often write it. And so we just write it as this, A plus B. And some will even write their own as A plus B. They put half here and put H here. It could be written in a format. And you see, that's exactly the formula for a trapezium. Let's look at that of a parallelogram. The area of a parallelogram, the top is B, the bottom is B. That gives me 2B over 2. Perpendicular height is simply H here. And the area is BH. If I also have a rhombus, it will be the same B is as long as I have perpendicular height. And if there's no perpendicular height, we use other formula. So I hope we have learned that instead of cramming the formula for finding the area of plane shapes, we could easily use the formula top plus bottom over 2 times perpendicular height. And that will always work for these kind of plane shapes. And do not forget the places we are talking about are those ones that have at least a pair of parallel lines. A pair of parallel lines. Thank you for watching. Thank you for viewing my channel. And please do not forget to click like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get more information on any other topic. Thank you and God bless.